when I was doing Broadway Bound from uh, producer Manuel Eisenberg, um, my character, Stanley, a would-be comedy sketch writer, spends the entire first act with a pad and pencil in his hand because he's trying to come up with a comedy sketch. And I realized early on in rehearsals that we had an actor named John Randolph who be won a Tony for the show, became the toast of Broadway. He was in his early 70s. And it, I became aware quickly that John was never going to master his lines. He was going to be close. And on any given night, he'd be letter perfect. But there would be a good percentage of the time where we would get a variation on a theme. And they were always unbelievably funny. So I started taking notes. And every cast member eventually blows a line here and there. And I had this chronicle. So every three weeks during the run of that show, I published a newsletter called Broadway Blown. And it would be the actual line, the line as it came out in that performance, and then some sort of editorial comment. And it was a real underground thing. We didn't want anybody to find out we were doing this. But they did. Manny Eisenberg found out, and he loved it. And he actually shared it with Neil Simon, who I thought would be furious. Neil loved it. And they asked me to write a faux award show so that everybody connected with the production could go to a big party and win an award. So I wrote a faux Tony Awards show. And they loved that. OK. Cut to two years later. <clears throat> Jerome Robbins is going to do, he's going to return to Broadway in a spectacular remounting of the biggest numbers he ever had in his Broadway stage choreography career. Terrific. No need to call Jason Alexander, because I dance, but I ain't that kind of a dancer. I can't dance West Side Story. Now I get a call from Manny Eisenberg. Why don't you come down and audition for Jerry Robbins? I said, as what? He said, uh, the glue. You're going to be the glue of the show, the host, the MC. I went, N no. I have no interest in standing on a Broadway stage eight times a week for a year going, in 1984, Jerry Robbins, da, 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 da. I said, get, get a moderator, get, get a historian. Get a, I want to be an actor. I don't want to be a narrator. Okay, no audition. A month later, he calls back. I really want you to come down. You're gonna, you'll, you'll write it yourself. He doesn't know what he wants. You'll write it. No. I'm not, No. It's a dance show. I'm not going to write a dance show. There's no writing. OK. Third time he calls, he goes, I let you out of your contract early to do the pilot for ER. He had. He said, you owe me a favor. He said, I'm, you can't make me do a, a Broadway show for a year as a favor. He said, nope. I want you to come down, audition, and talk to the man. Once you've done that, we're square. OK. What's the audition? He said, learn. A couple songs from Fiddler, a couple songs from Forum. Bring him in. He'll have you do some stuff. OK. I go down to the Michael Bennett Studios at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. Lovely casting director says, Mr. Robbins, this is Jason Alexander. I don't get hello out of my mouth. And Jerry Robbins goes, why the fuck am I having so much trouble getting you to audition for this show? And I said, well, with all due respect, Mr. Robbins, I don't want to be in your show. I said, please don't misunderstand. I'll be the first person online to buy a ticket. I can't wait to see it. But I, I can't do what you do. I, I, I'm not a dancer. And what Manny has described to me is, is a job for a non-actor. And I only want to be an actor. I, I don't want to be a narrator. He goes, well, do you know the Fiddler material? I went, yeah, because my mother's wanted me to play Tevye since I was five. Yes, I know the Fiddler material. So he goes, go over there and sing Sunrise, Sunset. So I sing Sunrise, Sunset, and I don't realize that I'm in front of nine gigantic bay windows looking out to the south of New York, and the sun is setting. And when I tell you I'm 29 when I do this audition, I've known the Fiddler score since I'm five years old. I, I know how to sing this. And I finished singing it, and I look back at Robbins, and he's got tears in his eyes. And I went, oh, this is not going to be a good conversation. <laughs> and we had a really interesting conversation. He said, look, the truth is I, don't, I know what I want to do in the show. I don't know 
how it's a show. I don't know what links it. I don't know what the connective tissue is. And Manny had said to him, Jason's creative, Jason writes, Jason's a chameleon, he'll work with you, you'll figure it out, he'll write it for you, and he'll play whatever it is that's the result. He said, I have faith that you can actually do that. So I don't care, if you take the show, I don't care what your contract says, I am telling you, if you're not happy as an actor on opening night, you can leave the next day. Just get me to opening night. And I said, okay, it's not going to do a thing for me as an actor. There's no acting role here. But I know I want to direct. It's one of the greatest stage musical directors of the 20th century. I'll apprentice. I'll sit at his heels and I'll watch what he does. And with that as the goal, I took the gig. And we rehearsed for an unprecedented six and a half months and opened the show. And I, I, I was happy enough with what I did. It wasn't everything that I would have wanted him. I, I must have rewritten the show for him a half a dozen times because his ego was strange. Um, and every time I made this, I said, you know, he said, I don't want the show to be about me. I said, it's called Jerome Robbins Broadway. You're the only thing that links this material together. It has to be about you. I said, what if I play you? And we somehow dramatize the moment of inspiration for any one of these numbers. And then it all comes out of your imagination and we do the number. Yes, yes, great. So I spend two, three weeks writing that and showing him pieces and doing it, rehearsing it. And three weeks later, he'd go, it's too much about me. I don't want to see me on the stage. And we'd throw that away. We'd do another approach and another approach. And eventually it just became, I would play some character from each of the shows. And as quickly and succinctly as I could, I would explain to the audience in that character whatever they needed to know to appreciate the number on its own. Which is fine. So what it became is a magic trick of me playing, I think, 14 different people in the course of the evening. And um, for me, that is not a big deal. That's, I, I like doing that. I like changing my skin. For other people, they look at it and go, ooh, that's really amazing. You know. Um, so they gave me a Tony Award. That's about how much I know about how to steer my own career. I was going to turn this thing down, and it gets me the Tony Award, which was the only thing I ever wanted when I stood in my living room at age seven going, I want to thank the Academy, thinking there was an Academy for Broadway shows. Um, and that, that is what Jerome was all about. How did it feel to win that Tony? Uh, numb. I was numb. Uh, it was actually, again, an amazing learning experience because I had fantasized about it for a long time. I did not fantasize it happening at age 29. And um, one of the most pivotal shows for me is Pippin. Pippin is the show that made me want to be an actor. I thought my attraction to Pippin was Ben Vereen because he's the magician on the stage. As an adult, I've come to realize that it is much of what Pippin goes through that keeps me coming back to that show. So Pippin has a line um, after he goes to war, thinking war is going to be glorious and fulfilling and his destiny as a soldier. And he looks at the carnage around him and he turns to the audience and says, I thought there'd be more plumes. And that's what I felt when I got home on Tony night. It was great, but I was still the same guy I was when I had gone to, to this show. So I said, I thought that I turned, I remember turning to my wife and saying, I thought there'd be more plumes. And it was a very, very, very good lesson because it ain't about the plumes. It's not about the awards. It's not about those nights. Um, but it was amazing. It was, it, it, it really did in some ways throw me for a loop because it was an ultimate fantasy at a very early age, realized at a very early age. So I got to Broadway at an early age and I got my trophy for going to Broadway at a very early age and I literally said, I don't know what to fantasize about. I don't know what to dream about at 29. <laughs>